Hey there guys, this is Ignite for Fire, and welcome back to a brand new episode of my Skylanders Imaginators Let's Play. So today we're going to head out for the Sky Fortress, which is chapter number 5 in the game, which makes it episode number 7, I think this is, right here. And so to start us off, we're going to be unlocking some Imaginite chests. And it's either episode 7 or 8, so I can't quite remember, so that's why I'm saying episode 7, but I could be wrong on that, so as always, do not quote me on that. But either way, let's be opening up this one as well, see what we got. We've got some new shoulder guards, which we'll be getting some uh, better stats. That will turn out useful in the long run, hopefully. And then we also got this rare um, armor right here, in the form of a ninja weapon. Um, a bow blitz, awesome indeed. Okay, we're in this from a grind challenge, so let's see what's uh, lying in wait for us. None other than the headgear known as the Fascinator, awesome. So, uh, level star um, gave us none other than a ultimate smash weapon for Wrenchinator, which gets boosted stats. And it's time for the final chest in this Imaginite Vault right here, which is an epic. And we get some exoskeleton arm armor with yet again boosted stats. So, yeah, let's be destroying trees and earning gold because we all know how much uh, I love my gold and how much we don't really care for trees, right? <laughs> I'm kidding, trees are awesome. But either way, um, right here, we're going to be. Uh, Going back to the more traditional blades. So let's see what else uh, we have for attacks. Two birds. Let's go for birds, see how that goes. Okay, then we also have a new six techniques we can do. Let's try this one. I don't think I uh, quite remember that one quite, quite yet. And we can't quite purchase that just yet, so we're just going to stick with uh, this good stuff for now. So yes, as you can see, our slash has indeed returned. Okay, this uh, realm is calling for Ember, Ty, uh, Crow, or Flower. I happen to have all three, but we're not worried about that just yet. Oh yeah, that sounds fun, all right, there, Max. Let's get to it, shall we? Okay, so it would seem that we are here. So let's be slicing, and dicing this stuff up right here. Yep, there's a bunch of vultures, is there not? So yes, I'm just going to explore this area right here to try and get some more gold. That's pretty much all what I'm here for. I'm not here to, like, do too much exploring or anything like that. Actually, speaking of gold, we're very close to being able to get that uh, soldier ability, which is why I've been after it so much. Oh, nope. <laughs> we're no longer um, a little tiny bit away from getting our soldier ability because we actually have enough to actually get it now. So the upgrade has been purchased, so we now got ourselves our soldier ability. So watch this. I know, it's pretty awesome, right? But I've well, let's be entering the goal. So yes, definitely I'm glad we got enough gold to uh, purchase that there final soldier ability, which is why I was doing a quick collection of gold at the end right now. Or at least... For beginning of the level, that's what I meant by that. Not quite the end yet. We've got plenty of time before the end of the video, guys. Don't just uh, don't worry about that just yet. But what you can worry about is these loading screens. Come on, game. Seriously, too many loading screens. I'm telling you. Well, you then it's about time. I think I might start cutting out those loading screens. In all fairness, like considering our silent loading screen would be quite boring, so I may as well cut it out, right? Depends on if I uh, remember to um, do so or not. But either way, I'm going to shut up so you guys can enjoy the cutscene without further ado. And yes, vultures are indeed nature's greatest mistake. Jet back. <laughs> that pun is funny, not really. Not cool. That's even more not cool. Yeah, he definitely deserves to pay all right. You know, give him food so you can uh, go out and buy some more that kind of pay. <laughs> so yes, it definitely does seem like some good advice right there. Oh, and if I, um, and when I said vultures are indeed nature's coolest mistake, I apologize if there's any uh, vulture scanners out there, but I don't think there is. At least I can't remember one off the top of my heart. I'm very good at rem rem remembering characters. And man, why did I stutter so much right there? How strange of me. But I've way since the current element is dedicated to tech, let's go ahead and bring in wind up. Which my light is not very good for right now. Okay, that's a little bit. And now I can actually see the character, which is the whole idea of my lighting in the first place. Because, you know, my lighting would be pretty useless if it doesn't actually do what I'm uh, having it in for. And how did Wind Up get attacked right there, dude? What are you doing? Boom, take that, sucker. 
Nice. Oh, darn, we need to uh, wind up. I mean, it is called wind up, for crying out loud. Boom, we got him. Nice. So, yes, I will happily be accepting those crates right there. And now, let's be activating this thing without further ado. Because if and now, just activate stuff and hope it doesn't uh, hope it doesn't go pear shaped for you from there. That's pretty much my advice for you guys. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So it's time to uh, destroy that thing right there. The vulture ship, to be specific. Thanks to that text, I really needed that. Yes, woohoo indeed. So boom, there we go. We have indeed blew, uh, blown it up successfully. So awesome to say the least. Okay, we're just going to take these guys down in advance before we wind up getting attacked by them again. And wow, we're going to wind up dying to, like, those mini birds right now. Which is not going to wind up cool. Okay, bring it on, guys. Yeah, what well, you definitely want to be careful right here, uh, wind up. Definitely want to be careful indeed. Nice! Wind up definitely uh, handled himself very nicely right there, indeed. I'm proud of you, bruh. So now let's uh, get taking selfies. I like the way how we found all the miniature birds really threatening, and then we just took out the um, big ones of these. And then that's going to make for a perfect selfie right there. Now that is awesome, indeed. It reminds me of that Spyro selfie from uh, episode one where he takes a selfie with his button and uh, flash wing is just like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that, that was a weird part in there. Academy, alright. A part that I wasn't really too fond of, because I do not like, um, humour like that. Put like this, I do not find it funny in the slightest. But that's just always how I've been, you know, I found that kind of stuff gross instead of funny. Okay, take this, enemies. Yeah, these guys aren't going to survive for much longer, considering we got tri-tip on the helm right here. You see what I mean? He's an absolute beast right here. Boom! He was like my third choice for Sky on the Smash, but I was like, nah, I'll probably get hit too easily because he is a Smasher, which means he focuses a lot on uh, close range combat. So I decided to go with Flare Wolf in the end for that their tournament. Oh, and that's his soldier ability right there, where he just, uh, where random meteorite just shows up. Ironic how dinosaurs using what uh, made the extinction in the first place against his enemies. Ironic indeed. But that's supposed to be the whole idea for soldier ability right there, and is that it? That was no challenge to try tip whatsoever. But hey, we do have a free chest over here, which I will absolutely um, endear myself in. So, uh, nothing wrong with a good old chest now and then. Oh, and here comes another meteor. Yeah, I definitely love that soldier ability indeed. A very unique one and a very awesome one at that. So let's be getting into this uh, Smasher Shrine right here. Okay, now that's what I call a smash right here. Having a smashing good time, right? Uh, try to. So yes, our Sky 2 power is indeed ready now. As you can see, there was three brawlers there. There was Tri-Tip uh, Chop Scotch, who I have right here. Or to be specific, Candy, candy Coat Chop Scotch. I don't have uh, for regular Chop Scotch, unfortunately. And then there was also Piñata, who I don't own any versions of. So this is going to be for last of our Sensei uh, Smasher Shrines. Yeah, this is never one where uh, you don't get the in-game variant for the cutscene, which is a shame indeed. Yeah, that's more of a comedic cutscene, but I've got nothing wrong with that. I like the cinematic ones, and then the comedy ones are nice, uh, like, rest from those ones, like, I suppose. A nice blend of comedy and, uh, action in the, sh uh, in the um, I was going to say show then. <laughs> no, in the game, I should say. In the show is when it comes to Skylanders Academy, which also has a great blend of humour and action as well. And we've got Squirrel's Bounty. So actually, maybe I should uh, talk a lot about TV shows recently and the direction they're going in. Because, um, the thing with TV shows is that I love action-filled TV shows, like cartoons and stuff. Like, I prefer it when they're all um, action-packed. I don't prefer com uh, comedy uh, shows to that. But the thing is, is that um, action shows are really uh, starting to go, like... Out of uh, out of fashion, pretty much. So there's not many uh, decent action shows out at uh, this day. Like they're not making many new ones. I mean, there's plenty out there for you to rewatch, but there isn't many new ones coming out. At least not many decent ones, because action shows these days tend to re uh, rely more on like um, childish jokes and um, like 
cheap uh, above all cutscenes because you know they're not going to put too much money into a kids show. Why would they possibly do that? And I'm on about cartoons right now. Like there's plenty of action shows out there. Um, you know, ones for adults as well. They aren't going out of fashion. But as for action cartoons, uh, yeah, those most certainly are. Which is a shame because, like I said, action cartoons are my favourite type of cartoons, and it's such a shame that they're going out of fashion so quickly as well. Nice, because of course cartoons pander towards kids, and kids would rather like see people. Uh, would rather like have jokes in their cartoons than what they would at uh, decent action scenes, which is you know a shame. And they also wouldn't really care about characters, and that's another thing I like to see in like TV shows or cartoons, whatever. I love to see great characterization, but that's the thing. Modern modern day cartoons are getting more and more lazy, which means characters are getting uh, a backseat, like relying on comedy and like just basically entertaining kids. They're not bothered about the characters or anything like that. They just want to keep kids busy for half an hour. And, you know, it's, it's a huge shame that it's uh, come, come to this, because, you know, there's plenty of great shows out there from the past, as I've said, which you, which you could rewatch. but modern-day cartoons are just getting worse and worse, in my opinion, because of their lack of action or character development and stuff like that, purely because they want to make some quick money, sell some toys, all that stuff. Like, Transformers Robots in Disguise is the worst um, example of this, because... You know, it's a very cheap show, it's a very safe show, they don't take any risks, it's not got any, like, big animation or action, um, cinematics to it or anything like that, it's, it's not centralised characters, it's basically just centralised around, uh, like, making money and, um, selling toys. Where Transformers Prime, the show which um, Robots in Disguise is supposed to be a sequel to, that was a complete opposite. That wasn't bothered about selling toys. That was bothered about making a good show. It had very good action, very good animation, and even very good characters as well. Like that's one of the shows to recommend we rewatch, and I've rewatched it a few times because of how awesome it is. And right here we have got the Night Soul Gems. That's awesome. So yeah, if you're gonna watch a Transformers show, watch Prime. Don't watch Robots in Disguise. Pretty much put it like that. Transformers, robots in disguise, absolutely sucks. End of story. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a shame that they took such a great show, such as Prime, and then they w went and sport it with a supposed sequel as Robots in Disguise. I wish Robots in Disguise was more of a, like, separate entity, then, uh, so it wouldn't be associated with Prime. But the thing is, is that it needs those ties to Prime, because, um... Otherwise, the show won't do very well, because, of course, the best part about Robots in Disguise is when it links into Transformers Prime, like, when it has all the Prime characters in it, like, Bulkhead and Ratchet and Optimus and all that. Like, those are the highlights of the show, when they have all the characters from Prime in it, and that's hilarious, having a show where the only highlights is characters from previous shows, you know. I do find that funny, that that's the only good part of uh, Robots in Disguise, in all fairness. Boom, take this. Yes, nice. Okay, nice one. Thanks for that, Jetpack. Okay, here comes the Scorkin. Oh, oh, that guy. That guy hurts. Let's just stick with that. I'm pretty sure that's enough description indeed. Oh, goodies. Oh, wait, no. We haven't taken out the pilot yet. Yeah, you really want to take out the pilot, because after you've taken out the pilot, it's much more easier to take those guys down. All we got to do is avoid them. Ooh, that was close right there. I almost failed that. Wait, was I just stuck on an invisible wall right there? I was. That was awesome. I was stuck on an invisible platform. Now, get out of there, Smolder Dash. Wow, that got real close really, really quickly. But hey, with Smolder Dash, he's too awesome to be defeated. Okay, we're going to focus on taking out the big guy, but then again, these guys do also need a bit of taking out as well. Yeah, I apologise that I am taking a while for this, but, um, you know, slow and steady wins the race and all. Especially when it's night and murder and you play with past characters. Oh, man. That got really intense really quickly. I think I dodged that by a few uh, millimetres right there, thanks to my immense uh, reaction time. Okay, we're absolutely getting out of here before we get, like, overrun by enemies. And wind up dying as a result. Okay, help me jet back, please. Or you just completely miss the enemies altogether. You know, I suppose that works. Not really. Oh, no. There was no way of me getting out of that. Right. Uh, she fought so well as well. And then she's just defeated afterwards. It's a huge shame. Like, after after putting up a fight like that, I've got to be proud of someone to bash, honestly. Like, that near miss she had with that uh, squawk and all right there. That was impressive. So yes, I think she did well, personally. 
I mean, you guys could argue against that, but I think she did anyway. That was close. We almost got hit by the uh, squawk and all. Yeah, you guys can tell when things get intense for me because I like my voice goes all high pitched and I get rude and stuff. Like you guys can tell about it, my voice. And seriously, oh no! I was using that guy so we could go to the quick shot shrine afterwards. But so much about that, kind of like what happened to Starcast. Actually, come to think of it, speaking of Starcast. Let's go on ahead and give him a second chance. We're not allowing him to, like, be defeated by a splatter pillar that easily. It's time for him to make up for it, and I'm sure he'll be just fine with it. I mean, like, look at that. He's uh, in, and over already he's taken out an enemy. Oh, darn, this guy's annoying me. Okay, let's get off that quickly. Boom. Thank heavens for that right now. Boom, take this. Yep, uh... <laughs> Star, uh, Starcast is most certainly doing a whole lot better now than what he was. I almost called him Star Strike then by accident, I will admit. Okay, who's still left? You. You're still left. How dare you be left? That is rude, and I will not be accepting your rudingliness, if that's even a word. And if it wasn't, then it is now. Oh, nice. For, um, part of a castle set. Your parapet shoulders are indeed. So now let's get wrecking some crates without further ado. Okay, Skylander. You're now in control of your very own wrecking ball. But man, I like the way how Dr. Crankcase is the sense he's supposed to be all overpowered and all that, and yet he lasted even less time than Small Dash did, even though Small Dash has been nerfed. Granted, of course, he was a much lower level and uh, didn't have all of his upgrades, but still, I find it funny nevertheless. <laughs> Wrecking Ballery? That's not a word, Jetfax. Sorry to break it to you. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm not sorry to break it to you at all. Because <laughs> I'm cruel like that. That's why I laughed. That was an evil laugh. <laughs> Yeah, in case you guys can't tell, I'm, I'm terrible with the evil laughs and all. Like, my evil laughs are so bad that it's evil for me to even do it within your presence because it'll be so embarrassing that you'll find it evil. So my evil laugh is even better than most evil laughs because of how bad it is, making it, like, evil to do, do around people. Because <laughs> of its genuine aw uh, awfulness, I find that ironic, I suppose. Even though I way over explained that, <laughs> definitely, my commentary has uh, some work to do, but hey, this is what you do when you do not do the, the description stuff. Yes, I am, aren't I? I mean, like, look at that handsome uh, devil on the portal right there. Starcast most certainly is handsome, especially with um, six limbs and all that, taken after the slam bam. Come on, dude. You need to be your own original identity, not just like slam bam. Well, you know, it's maybe Slam Bam's just like you, and uh, we totally never noticed. No, I'm kidding, it's totally the way around, because of course Slam Bam came first. By the way, uh, ironically, we got Starcast Soul Gem with Starcast, so that's awesome indeed. So, yeah, this guy's looking awesome right now. Boom. Look at that attack right there, it's awesome. So, yes, we got some more enemies to take out right here, so let's go ahead and finish him off. Let's be using some Sky Chi without further ado. But yeah, we've definitely had a really interesting episode so far. Cartoons and all that fun stuff. Definitely going to go as far to say that I enjoyed it. And yes, nice. Uh, that Sky Chi most certainly worked uh, to our advantage, alright? No so neither do I, uh, Jetpack, neither do I. Why did you make him so hard to jump on, might I ask? Oh boy, here comes uh, some more enemies, it would seem. Okay, here we go, nice. Now I got my uh, little shadow ghost up to help us take out this dude right here. Yeah, you ain't taking me down that easily. Starcast is here to redeem himself, and redeemed himself he has. But now it's time for Quick Shock Shrine. And like I said, um, I was uh, I turned to Dr. Crank case so we could utilize him for the Sensei Shrine, but it seemed like this game had other ideas, unfortunately. So we're not going to be able to use uh, Dr. Crank case for the Shrine, but who he can use, however, is Tidepool, who is awesome. Yeah, she literally is. She's so good that she is in a league of her own. So let's get into it, shall we? Tidepool without further ado. 
Oh, and as for all the cutscenes I missed, you characters being defeated, I will show them off in the finale. So that's Starcast and Dr. Crank Case so far. Now that's what I call uh, a great, good use of your allies right there, Tidepool indeed. So yes, the Skyji power is indeed uh, ready indeed, but uh, we won't need it just yet, I would hope. So let's just advance with a level. The cool thing about Tidepool is that as you can see, she just uh, she did that spread shot, so that's very, very cool indeed, makes her very, very useful. So here comes Jetpack. I know, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's more importantly all right. The battleship is important. That would go as far to say. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea, right there, dude. But I've way another great idea is to swap from one water character to another in the form of going from Typhoon to Dark Snapshot. Let's get clocking and rolling without further ado. In case you guys couldn't tell, that was my um. Australian accent, but I apologise, uh, that was an awful Australian accent. Boom, let's smash that up. Oh yes, thank you very much, I'll be taking that. Nice, we levelled up to level 11. In fact, we're actually quite close to level 12 as well. Who knows, maybe we'll actually make that in this session right here, which would be glorious indeed. Up we go. Hurry, Stark Snapshot, you can do it, hurry. Go. Ah, oh, so close and yet so far away. At least this game doesn't damage you for falling off like Superchargers do, uh, does, because if it was, uh, that would be annoying. Okay, there's all them crates taken down. Yeah, definitely be very careful in this part. Patience is a very good thing to have for this here section, because if you don't have patience, you will fail. End of story. There we go. Can't wait for me to be impatient now, now that I've said that. Like so. Yep, that's where impatience gets you guys. <laughs> I like the way how right after I say to be patient, I go ahead and be impatient like that. Very silly of me indeed. But hey, that was an example of what not to do, so I'm just good like that. I will show you guys both what to do and what not to do. There we go, that's better. Then there's one right down here, you can see due to the chain, and that's the same with this one, because I saw it. So now we're going to wait. And now we're going to go. Okay, so we've now got a safe spot, so if we fall down, we'll at least go here, at the very least. But I think this is the last uh, section. Yes, it is indeed, so now we can earn ourselves a uh, soul gem, which belongs to none other than Blaster Man, I believe. Yes, it does. So yes, we're going to preview Blaster John. Trust me, this dude is awesome, it's just that I failed with him the last time I played with him purely because A, it's not a mode, and B, because I failed on the rail section so much. Like, if I didn't fail that much on rail section, he would have been just fine in that episode, I can assure you guys. Oh, darn. <laughs> now, that's what I call failure right there. Failure 101. He could die for 5%. And that's another failure right there, because, um... I got the, those the sentences completely mixed up, unless, of course, um, your argument could be of just trying to quote Yoda, in which case, yeah, I'll go with that, because Yoda is awesome, and so why would I not want to quote him at all? Ow! That was not cool, dude, did you have to hurt me? No, 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 she answer, I need you to do it anyway. Ooh, close. Oh, darn, missed him. This is getting harder and harder to survive right here. Okay, let's bring in our thingy McBob. Or maybe not, because it doesn't go up slopes, because it's stupid. Here we go, this is by far his most damaging attack. Okay, now let's go and try to take out that guy. Oh, nice, very much taken out right there. Boom. Okay, we're just going to stay still, because while we're staying still, he can't hear us, which means he can't charge at us. So that's what I recommend for these guys. If you're using a ranged character, basically just stay still and hit them, because they they can't attack you, but you can attack them. So that's your advantage, I'd say. And so don't worry, guys, we'll get him eventually. Because, yeah, that's the thing. Squawk and Oars are actually blind, so they depend on their pilot um, in order to hunt, basically, hunt you down. But once you take out the pilot, of course they're blind, so they rely on their sense of hearing in order to find you. And so if you stay still and they can't hear you, then they won't be able to charge at you, basically. So that's why I've given you the tip of if you're a ranged character, keep your distance and don't move and you should be just fine. 
And I feel like that was some good uh, advice indeed, hopefully. Ship should be in ship shape. 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 There you go, said it. Watch Snapshot get owned by the uh, little dudes like Wind Up Wars. There we go. That, that's that's much better. A little less ownage than uh, Wind Up right there, I will uh, go as far to admit. Okay, now let's get pushing this thing into shape. Awesome. So now we got one last thing to get pushing it, that would involve this one over here. Nice, so half of that's been highlighted right here, so now we need to push this final block into place. And head on to this part right here, aka the circuit breaker according to Jetvac. Okay, so we're gonna hit this thing right here, get the first uh, engine up and running. Yes, it does. That is true. Good, good maths right there, Jack. Fact, you can do two minus one. That is profound A level maths. Like that, that that is some tough maths right there. And he's not even a mathematician. That's just sure enough right there, Jack. Fact, honestly, it's about maths is so much more better than mine. In case you guys can't tell, I'm being sarcastic. It's not that hard to do two minus one for crying out loud. And trust me, A-level maths is much harder than 2-1. minus one. I wish it was 2-1, minus one, uh, I wish A-level maths was that easy, but it's not that easy. I mean, like, I don't do A-levels, at least not yet, because I'm still on my GCSEs, but I can only guess how hard uh, A-levels would be. And darn, I failed for my stupid reason right there, because I pressed the jump button, but it didn't jump. It's, it's so frustrating when that happens. In fact, look how frustrated Dark Snapshot is. He's so frustrated that he literally slammed his bow and arrow down with such frustration. Wait, what? How do I get on the thingy? That was a bit silly. It kind of threw me off my platform, in all fairness. So, yeah, let's uh, try this again, and hopefully I won't fail. Third time's a charm and all. By the way, if we make, ourself, uh, make our way all the way over here and jump over there, or completely fail, yeah, we ain't giving up that easily because there's a nice reward waiting for us over there. Or maybe we are because this is actually frustrating me now. Okay. So, yeah, if... Uh, if you do it like this, hope nope, don't do it like that. That's the wrong way to do it, and that is also the wrong way to do it. Okay, what I'm basically doing right now, guys, is I'm showing you the wrong way to do it, so now I'm actually going to show you the right way to do it. You're welcome. Because, like I said, I like to show you both the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it. Because I'm helpful like that. Okay, that would work if we could actually jump up there, but we can't. <laughs> but hey, at least I showed off uh, some sort of cooler uh, thing right there. Because the interesting thing about that is that that does actually have collision detection which is cool you'd think you just like go straight through it but you don't oh there we go we finally made it um so we finally and ourselves and imagine our chest right here only a rare for all that not cool but tell you what is cool the coconut hand that's most certainly cool you see it's interesting that that thing actually has collision detection you think it just fall right through it but nope it actually has collision detection which is cool indeed so let's be accepting that burger right there because apparently crocodiles really like burgers then again, I suppose all a uh, burger is is meat, and crocodiles do like meat, so maybe they do like burgers, who knows. Even though crocodiles tend to like fish, not necessarily like beef or anything like that, so maybe they wouldn't enjoy it, but who knows. I mean, like, I personally haven't seen an alligator to feed it a hamburger, but if you guys have, I'd love to know. <laughs> ah, what is this episode? I'm not even going to bother asking, because it's a good one, so we're just going to stick with that. Yeah, it'd be so awesome if these guys had some sort of, like, sky chi ability, but no, they just had to nerf them, didn't they? They just had to. Boom, take that. And this, don't forget this spot. Boom, there we go. I like the way how they're all, like, stunned by that. It makes it a very useful attack indeed. Okay, now let's head all the way back to the other side here. Get all these guys all trapped up. Oh, darn, now we've got another guy to worry about. Nice! Oh, even, even better. Dark Snapshot is doing very well right now. I'm very proud of him indeed. I think this is one of the only guys that wasn't nerfed too much by the looks of it. Like, he's doing much better than what I thought he would be, in all fairness. So again, it's something to be proud of, and I am indeed proud of him. Uh, no, okay, nice, take that, Sonny. 
So now we can advance through here, or maybe not, you know, that's a possibility as well. Do we have to loosen this thing? Nope, is there an enemy still alive? Enemy, where are you? Nope, there's no enemies alive, so open up, you silly, silly door. Open. Open sesame? Open, please. Please don't glitch on me, I beg of you. That would be very, very painful if you do so. Door, please, I beg of you. Okay, guys, I'll be right back. If I have to restart this level, man, if I have to restart this fucking level... Yep, I'm gonna have to restart the fucking level! Okay guys, I'm back. I found this enemy right at the back of the ship right here. How it got here, I don't know, but it looks like we're gonna need to defeat it to open that door. Yes, I was indeed right by that. I got really worried for a moment there. I thought I had to restart the level, but no, fortunately that was not the case. So yes, let's go ahead and better get back to that door without further ado, so we can be blasting that door open. Oh yes, nice, we've got some more experience from that. Yeah, Dark Snapshot's definitely doing great on the uh, leveling up, it would seem. So yes, let's go ahead and grab this uh, thing in McBob right here. Yeah, let's just stick with that. That's accurate enough. A new night weapon for Musketeer Rapier. Awesome. So um, that gets boosted stats also. But either way, I'm pretty sure the element of the area is about to swap to life. So we're going to go back to uh, Blastertron. We uh, just found the Soul Gem for, fortunately, and we're going to make up for his previous uh, endeavor, which didn't go too well, purely because, like I said, I failed on real section. Because if we did not fail on that real section, trust me, this guy would have done much better, so he deserves a way better showcase. So yes, what's the need, right? If you like elements, need stronger in zone. Like, uh, like Blastertron needs even more power. Ooh, that was close, though. I will go as far to admit. Come at me, bruh. Come at me. Hehehe. <laughs> Your mistake, dude. Your mistake. Okay, now we're gonna let him charge at us right over here. Boom, now we can set this thing down. And then we can take him out without further ado. Boom, there we are. We finished him. Yeah, that's just how awesome Blastertron is and all. One, definitely one of my favorite villains in this game. I also love his figure as well as figure. Um, his physical figure is very, very awesome, and his digital character is very awesome as well. And I love when Skarners do that, when they have both an awesome design aesthetically, and an awesome character in-game as well. And that's definitely what it did with Blastertron, so it's good to see indeed. Definitely worth the 15 quid I paid for him, put it like that. Oh yeah, Burger, I'll happily be taking that. Apparently, uh, futuristic robots like uh, hamburgers as much as crocodiles, apparently. So that's good, I suppose. So yes, let's get pushing this thing into place without further ado. There we go. Awesome. I just realized I say awesome a lot. I say awesome to everything. Even things that aren't awesome, I say awesome to. <laughs> I just, I, I suppose that's just because I am an awesome person. End of story. We're sticking with that. Absolutely, let's be doing some blasting, all right. Okay, so I'm happily going to accept that gold right there, and then we're going to push this thing um, over here. Get over there. Okay, so now that that's twisted back, we can uh, push this into the correct position without further ado, which is good. I uh, would definitely go as far to say. So I'm just trying to remember what I'm missing. At the moment, I'm missing a troll radio and a um, legendary selfie frame. And luckily for us, I know where both of those things are. And we haven't missed them yet, so that is fortunate indeed. Ears, that is some great fruits of our labour indeed. Even though they didn't taste too good, I've got to admit. But still some great fruits of our labour nevertheless. Well, that quite nicely, didn't it? Yes, it did, Jetpack. Okay, the water element might be stronger here, but we're just going to stick with a Blastertron right here. Hopefully I do not regret such a decision, and I'm sure I will not. If worse comes to worse, we'll just have to use our Sky G. 
There we go, nice. Exactly what we needed. Yeah, enemies, you won't uh, defeat me that easily. Oh, done. Or maybe you are, who knows? Thank you, Jetpack. But yeah, Nightmare Mode ain't as easy as one would seem. I mean, like, it's called Nightmare Mode for a reason, you know. Okay, let's bring in our Sky Cheat in. Oh, wow, this is a crazy Sky Cheat sequence. The only problem is that nobody's nearby to actually, like, experience it. Yes, thank you, Jetpack. That actually turned out useful for once. For once, something an NPC did actually turn out useful for us. For once, I'm surprised that never happens. Especially when it comes to NPCs such as Flynn and uh, characters like that. Not to name any NPCs in particular that are useless. At home, Flynn. Oh, oops, I thought he said not to name anyone. Eh, never mind about that. Okay, that's the best way to... Uh, T tap those things because that that way is most likely to end up in success for you. And that's gone. I didn't see that one coming, but we're going to stick with uh, Blastertron right here anyway. Now I say I know where that troll radio is, but now I'm not too sure. I originally thought it was in this room, but I could be wrong by that. And by the looks of it, I most certainly am. Troll radio, where are you? I have completely forgotten. All oh, right, so that's what this one does. Okay, go back. Do you, do you even go back? Oh no, you don't go back, you come forward, that makes sense now. Oh darn, I had that like twisted for completely wrong way around, way around to where it needed to be. So we're gonna twist it right way around now, and then we can make our way to that legendary selfie frame. Awesome. So now let's be hitting this thing and heading back upstairs. And then from that we can also earn an awesome Imaginite chest, let's get into that, shall we? Awesome, some Night Leg Guards uh, earning some boosted armor. Two things I really do love to see. Okay, definitely watch out, because all of those crates means that there's a, a heavy enemy in them, so you definitely want to be aware, especially if you go to attack them, that is. There we go, that weren't too hard now, was it? So yes, let's get opening this thing. This thing go a dingo. Yeah, let's just stick with that, that's plenty specific enough. And yep, I have definitely uh, completely forgotten about patrol radio, really, wherever that thing is. Oh, nope, now I remember where it is, it was in that room with a squawk and all. And that's also where the Creation Clash game was. Oopsie daisy. And it's also where the... Uh, snail um challenge was and i did not even hit that and yeah i counted for it anyway but who cares we're gonna win this sort of thing i'm sure okay no we're not yeah we absolutely are not not unless i get sky chi any minute soon sky chi come to me or food even better nope that ain't happening oh and there's some uh, hamburger right there but anyway that's because um for some reason it attacked the battle gong when I didn't want it to because my attacks went in a completely of, uh, opposite direction to what I wanted them to and I was not uh, ready for that whatsoever. So we're going to reattempt this uh, Sensei Gong with uh, Mr. Cat because he's at full health so hopefully that should work out to our, adventure, uh, to our advent uh, advantage. That's what I was trying to say, I just failed. Uh, I just miserably failed to say in it. So yeah, let's get going. So yeah, uh, I'll basically just do the creation clash and the... Um, like troll radio and the speed run because I'll have enough time to do so because it's just in like a, a room like right next to where the squawken or um spawned in uh during the fire combat scene where smolder dash was and also got defeated as well so yeah it's it's only going to take like an extra five seconds to go into so um it shouldn't affect our time so that's why I would do so in the speed run you see this badassness right here I mean, like, Mr. Cat doesn't even need the Sky Chi to beat this thing. Okay, scratch that. Maybe, uh, maybe she does. We're just gonna do it to be safe, but I'm pretty sure we secured this victory anyway. You see what I mean? I didn't even need to finish the, uh, finish using the Sky Chi ability right now. If I fail now because of that, I'm gonna be really annoyed. 
This is getting really close really quickly. Nice, we got him. Now that's what I call awesomeness of a helm right there. So let's be opening that up and getting some ultimate weaponry from it. A source of weapon with boosted stats. Awesome indeed. And we are very close to getting to level 20 with Mr. Cat, which is definitely a, a very glorious sight to be seen. And Don, uh, my stupid lamp just fell over. I apologize about that uh, sudden change in lighting for you guys. Hopefully that does not happen again. But anyway, let's get taking some selfies without further ado. Oh, that's one epic selfie right there. So let's be heading over here to the final area, which we need to do so to complete the level. So first things first, we're going to head up here, grab that, and uh, level up from it, hopefully. Yes, we did indeed level up from it, so that's awesome. Mr. Cat is now at level 20. We'll probably wind up needing an Imaginator after all of this, though. So let's head inside and see what Doom Lander battle awaits. We're trying to destroy your so-called guacamole monster, dude. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Yes, in all honesty, I did indeed uh, think that, in all fairness. You uh, surprised even myself right there, Chaos. Oh my gosh, Night Class, that sounds dangerous, because Night Class is indeed dangerous. Party with my wrath. Eh, interesting, to say the least. Interesting, but not particularly good. Let's just stick with that. You really need to shut your mouth right there, uh... Chaos, I definitely recommend that of you. Oh, darn, we got caught in the blast right there. Yeah, I think we're definitely going to need to swap out later on right here. Yes, I do have to be such a hero. Okay, Arsenal, deal with it. Nice try, dude. I'm not defeated that easily. Wow, this is taking a really long time right here. Nighty night, seriously, Chaos, that is a terrible pun right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap back to uh, Cattle uh, Cattle Crasher in a minute. Or Cattle Crasher, whatever I called him. But either way, we're going to be swapping to him uh, to hopefully take down this uh, Doomlander faster. Oh my gosh, so evil. I can't believe how incredibly evil this dude is. So yeah, let's go ahead and swap out for him. Get this uh, Doomlander over and done for that video. Yes, he is indeed dear clarity. Who, who wouldn't dear clarity, right? Oh, so that's what that does. Oh, a pirate. How interesting. Oh, wait, we got a soldier ability. We're definitely going to unleash that on this guy in a minute. And by in a minute, I mean right now. Because what better time to do so? Well, too bad. I'm doing it anyway, there, Chaos. To deal with it. There we go. We have indeed knocked off some of his gears. So that's awesome. You can uh, growl all you want, but you ain't getting nowhere in life uh, with this attitude of yours. Yep, that's uh, chill about everything indeed, uh, Brand New Chaos. Alright, so that's what that does. Now I know. Why do these things keep on hitting everything but the Doomlander? It's annoying me so much. Ah, oh, yes, now the Wrecking Ball will hit him. Definitely a glorious sight to be beholding. 
Okay, let's be using our soldier ability in this dude. Ah, oh, yes, and Freckleball's gonna hit him, or maybe not. I suppose not, but hey, uh, at least we got close with him and all. Now it's gonna hit him, like that. Ha ha ha, take that, Sunny. Oh, man, it hit us as well. Oh, too much speed for one character, I suppose. So, yeah, let's, uh... Let's go Candy Coat to Chopscotch, actually. I was going to go back to Mr. Cat, but then I realised... Oh, wait, Candy Coat to Chopscotch should be doing with the uh, experience more, so, uh... We'll go with her instead. Wow, she doesn't even have her X attack yet. No, she don't. But she does have a Sky Cheese, so let's uh, utilize that. Oh, there we go. Awesome. That's definitely going to help us level up. Oh, yep, yeah, I was right by that indeed. And we definitely need some uh, gold to go alongside that, so we'll try and get some gold for her alongside, uh, along uh, as the series continues. That's what I was trying to say right there. I just miserably failed to say it. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the good luck right there. By the way, what's going to happen here is that basically after this we fight the Guacamole Monster, but I'm not bothered about doing that in this episode. All I'm bothered about this episode is completing Sky Fortress to 100%. And that does also include, of course, the speedrun, which hopefully we can get for, you know, that's our subjective in the um, meantime of doing so. And so what I'm going to do here is basically um, I'm going to record the um, Guacamole Monster fight right after this is done. But that's going to be next episode instead of this one. And then once that's done, I'm going to finish recording this episode so we can do the speedrun for um, Sky Fortress, pretty much. So Sky Fortress stays with this episode and Gokka Moly Monster is in the next one. Awesome, I think that too. So yeah, I'll see you guys back outside uh, Sky, uh, Sky Fortress then. I'll see you in a bit. But until then, bye ya! Thought you guys, uh, I bet you guys thought I was going to say peace for a moment there, but nope. So yes, we did indeed miss patrol radio and an area and no lives lost. And of course we didn't get the speedrun, you know, it's kind of hard to get a speedrun first time around. But hopefully we can finish all of those objectives in the speedrun. But either way, as I said previously, I'll see you guys back at Sky Fortress. On for MAP, I should be uh, more specific about that. So it's time for elaboration, and now that I've done so, it's time for the cut. So I'll see you guys um, after all of that has been edited out and that fun stuff. So yeah, see you in a bit. Man, I talk a lot. Okay then guys, I'm back with uh, Sky Fortress, so let's get into this level uh, already. So I'm going to skip through the loading screens for you guys. I'll see you guys back uh, at the level. Okay then guys, we're back in the level, as you can see I took off uh, Candy Coat to Chop Scotch with very little hesitation right there because for Skylander we're going to be using for the speedrun is Flare Wolf yet again. So yeah, you guys are probably wondering why are you always using uh, the fire like sensors and imaginators and all that stuff right there and that's because they're the only sensors that are actually decent speedrunners for the nightmare mode of the game. It's kind of like my Giants let Let's Play when all what I used for the speedrun uh, was basically um... Series 2 Drobot, and I did that because Series 2 Drobot was the only good speedrunner in that game, so basically Flare Wolf and the Fire Imaginator are basically um, this game's version of Series 2 Drobot, if you ever powered character to scrape a speedrunner basically. Okay, so basically we don't need to destroy that thing, so we're just going to skip straight for it, uh, because you know it's a speedrun, we've got to be speedy about it and all. Yeah, I left this over the moon attack right here. Trip to the moon indeed, mate. Yeah, that's basically what this attack is called. Trip to the moon or something like that. Yeah, see what I mean? Like, blowing that thing up has no effect because it flies off anyway. It's so silly, like that. Okay, there we go. That's all that sorted. But now we've got to wait for platforms. How rude. Patience? How can I possibly have anything to do with that right now? Okay, let's finish these guys off without further ado.
Nice, there's those ones all sorted. So now we just gotta sort out this guy. I would use my sky key, but now it doesn't seem like a good moment to use it to save the least. Yes, there we go, there's those guys sorted. So now let's uh let's get out of here. Yeah, no, it sure is a good thing I'm playing as Flare Wolf then, isn't it? Okay, here comes this uh, puzzle right here. We are back to the puzzle. Luckily, it's not a difficult one of those, so we should uh, complete this with relative ease. Okay, here we go. This is working out pretty well indeed. Yeah, as you can see, this guy definitely makes a great speedrunner with his rocket and all that, unless you miscalculate things like I just did right there. But still, he's making for a great speedrunner, nevertheless. There we go. Okay, the crane has indeed been activated. Oh, by the way, if you destroy all of the crates before you destroy all of the TNT, then you basically get a, a, a like achievement or trophy for it if you play it on the Xbox or uh, 360 or PlayStation 3 versions of the game, or PlayStation 4 or Xbox One for those matter uh, for that matter because of course those ones have those consoles have achievements and trophies also. Okay, it's time to take this guy down. Actually, I got a much better idea. Let's go in and use our Sky G. Yeah, let's get burning, yo. Lift the Sky G right here. I mean, look at this. It's on. That guy still ain't dead. That's one powerful dude right there. To say the least. And they only get more powerful from here. I've got to admit. Yeah, this is going to be much harder than I originally thought. Okay, let's get away from that selfie swap before I end up paying for it. Uh, Awfully, to say the least. Nice try, fellas. Well, a sky is filling up very fast, that's good to see. Okay, so this was a room that I missed before, as I was talking about. So we now have all areas found, so we're just going to get straight into this uh, troll radio right here, if it actually wants to do that, that is. Yes, let's get spinning without further ado. Boom. 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 Nice. I'm hoping this doesn't actually take up any of our actual time because I also want to get this sorted. Quickly, let's get to it. Boom. There we go. Nice. So yes, our egg has been rescued and this mission is indeed over. Or at least for egg mission anyway. So now let's be collecting these snails because I want to complete this challenge and hopefully this won't cost us our speed run because if we do I'll be very disappointed indeed. But if I fail, uh, if, if I fail the speed run objective then I'll just do it at my own time. And then after this we're going to get right to that creation crash game. Yeah, it's a pretty big room, so it's a big surprise that I actually forgot about it altogether. So I do apologise about that, but either way we're doing it now so that's what matters. Yeah, that sounds fun right there, Sky Baron uh, Robot. I will, in fact, join you with the um, Skystone Smash game, indeed. So let's get into it already. Without further ado, or apparently so, because loading screens. <laughs> so yes, there is a Drew, indeed. Here we go. Time to take this guy out. Oh, wow, look at Chaos. Chaos is definitely a powerful one, to say the least. Okay, let's play Golden Queen there. I was about to say so no one could take me, but never mind. Uh, 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 Aurora can take me from the uh, top, uh, bottom right there, or whatever you want to call it. So let's go on ahead and bring in Chaos so that, uh, so that then we have a powerful defense. Oh, darn, now all that Peñata can take my uh, Wolfgang. And there's nothing I can do about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to play um, Pit Boss right here so that then we can keep a great uh, defense at the very least. Okay, let's play Kingpin here because we can take bad Juju, but then I think, yeah, Hood School's going to take Kingpin, which will result in our loss, which is a huge shame to say the least. So let's just replay this. Hopefully, um, replaying it will wind up in our success. Right, 
Pinata's just been played, so let's play... Yes, that'll give us a good defense, luckily enough. Okay, there's Wolfgang. Yeah, let's keep with this high defense, and hopefully we can take advantage of that. Let's play... Hmm. Trying to decide for best... Yeah, let's play out of the bottom there, so then we can take all uh, all of those stones. Nice. Good play indeed. Sure, while Aurora can take um, Hood's call back, it's not going to do much of a difference, because we've won anyway. Nice. So we're going to play Flare Wolf from top right corner right there. And then he's uh, and then um, they're going to play Bad Juju, but it's going to have no effect on our victory. So yes, that was indeed a very well played. Yeah, uh, we're not going to quite do that, uh, Sky Baron Robot. We're just going to leave you instead. Okay, so we're going to have to open this up. So let's open uh, it up, and then we can get straight back into the crane for Dragon Bow. Awesome. So yes, let's get destroying crates without further ado. Yeah. Yes, I so will use it wisely indeed. Okay, I like this type of Wrecking Ball. I just hate for Scar and I like Wrecking Ball from uh, Spire's Adventure. Yeah, I, I hate that type of Wrecking Ball, but this Wrecking Ball, I'm a fan of this type of Wrecking Ball. Yeah, yet again, Jet Fact, you're making, making it worse, because trust me, Wrecking Ball Arena is not a word. And you can trust me on that, guys. Do not put that down on your English exam, exam or else you will lose marks and guarantee that much. I'm sorry I stuttered right there, guys. I kind of like, um... I did like a burp, but I didn't actually burp, so... You know, one of those weird stuttering situations, indeed. Okay, now, die. Yes, he died. I'm happy about that. God admit, I do love to smash in. Yeah, this is an awesome minigame. I do, I do like the, um... I do like the Wrecking Ball minigame. It's a very fun one, indeed. But this is the kind of thing where in Trap Team they would have made uh, for Nightmare Mode like different to the easier modes by like adding in extra speed to the Vultures or something like that. But in this game it's exactly the same when it comes to Wrecking Balls. Like um, it doesn't even take like two swings, it's just one ordinary swing to take these guys out. So that's a shame they didn't actually change anything for Nightmare Mode unlike Trap Team would have. But it's still cool nevertheless that this mini game is still available for all modes uh, indeed. Yes, we got him. That was close. I thought we was going to miss him then. But nope, we were indeed successful in our mission right now. So let's take the fight directly to these guys right here. Once they actually want to spawn in, that is. Hurry up before I lose this run because of your um, slowingliness. Let's just stick with that. Even though, yet again, that's not a word. How can I criticize uh, Jetpack for, like, saying words that don't even exist when I do that all the time anyway? Okay, there's all them lots sorted. Yes, they are indeed fired a uh, flare wolf, it would seem. So yes, let's get heading inside. And there's Jetpack yet again, but we're going to skip that because we've got no need to see these cutscenes over and over and all that. Oh, so close and yet so far away. That, that's annoying. If only I jumped instead of like launching myself, but honestly I thought I was lined up for that perfectly, but apparently not. Okay guys, apologize about the cut right there, so let's get back into this, shall we? There we go, we have fired yet another person. Yeah, um... Flare Wolf was great at firing these guys, supposedly. You want to make a terrible employer, all what you do is fire all your employees. <laughs> okay, if you guys wouldn't want to keep my voice down, it's actually because I'm recording this very late at night, so I don't want to wake uh, nobody up right now, because they've all gone to bed, which is why there was a cut right there and all that. <laughs> Gotta wish uh, for your folks good night and all that. So yes, let's uh, sort that out. Tech Skylanders might be stronger here, but that's not going to affect uh, us playing as Flare Wolf right here, because, you know, I'm not going to swap out because Flare Wolf is doing almighty fine right now. Okay, awesome, there we go. Oh, darn. 
Sky Key power is indeed ready, indeed. Oh, darn, got so close there, but not quite close enough according to the game, which is annoying. But hey, at least we don't need to worry about a jumping challenge this time, so, you know, that won't take up five minutes of time like it did last time. <laughs> in fact, I think it took up more than five, in all fairness, that's how slow we were with it. Very slow indeed, in case you guys didn't quite catch my drift and all that. Okay, there is a burger over there, but we're not going to bother going with that. Hopefully I don't pay the price for it because I am aiming for no lives lost in this run also. And if I can get no lives lost during the speed run, then that would be glorious. Okay, let's uh, head on to this thing and head back up. We are going to grab this burger though because that's very much within our grasp. Oh, darn. The door has uh, collision detection as well. Yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised how much close and tech detection this level actually has. Ooh, man, that got close right there. Okay, we're going to swap to our Fire Imaginator now before Flare Wolf is defeated, because that would be awful considering I've made it this far without any lives lost. So yeah, let's bring in Sea Stug without Fifer D. Yeah, your ultimate awesomeness indeed. Boom, take that, suckers. You see what I mean? She is too awesome. I mean, like, we absolutely plowed through those enemies right now. I'm behind you. Now I'm in front of you. <laughs> oh, it's so glorious to take these guys up. Boom. There we go. Yeah, I think this fire imaginator of mine right here is a bit too powerful. <laughs> yes, I kind of noticed that already, so we're just going to skip what you have to say right here and head right back up here, without further ado. Okay, so once we've done this, all what we have is that one uh, combat scenario uh, on the hull of a ship, and then we've basically got the Doom Lander, and then we're done for this hit speed run, which will indeed be great, to say the least. Nice, okay. There's all that sorted, so that's our first show. Now we've just got one more, and then um, we shall be sorted for this particular area. Oh yeah, and you can actually fall down there, and you will waste a lot of time in, time in doing so, so be sure not to do that if you're going for the speedrun objective. Because like I said, it'll be a huge waste of time, and it could cost you your run, so definitely be careful here to make sure you don't fall down, because that would be very foolish of you indeed. And I didn't do it, uh, for once I did do something foolish, so I'm definitely uh, I'm glad about that. So boom, there's all that sorted. Yet again, we're just going to skip this, as I've previously mentioned a few times actually. Oh wow, he's even faster than Jetpack right there. That shows how speedy this speedrun is. And unfortunately, we can't skip this, guys, so I'm sorry you're going to need to see that a second time. But it's not too long of a cutscene, and it's not particularly boring either, so I'm sure you guys will cope with it just fine. Okay, one thing I do want to do is I want to change uh, this knight's secret technique, because I don't like the secret technique in particular. So we're going to go with... This one instead for the uh, uppercut sword. I'm pretty sure that'd be a much better idea. Yes, that's true. Nothing to fear but fear of self. Okay, this is why the uppercut would be great. Boom. Boom. Oh, yeah, it pushes enemies back, which makes them easy to push off the stage. That most certainly would be awesome indeed. Goodbye, bruh. Goodbye, bruh. <laughs> you so mean it makes it so much more easy for taking out these enemies. Oh man, it's, it's so easy. Oh, I, I love this knight right here. Oh wow. Now that's what I call a big push. Didn't even need feces since the jetpack right there. We were just that awesome. Either if that or jetpack is just that useless. <laughs> you guys um, can decide that for yourselves. But either way, we got this last uh, clamp to remove, and then we can head out for the Doom Lander boss fight if we do. Which will, of course, mean the end of the episode. Suppose all that's left to do now is head to the bridge and fly this ship out of here. 
Yes, I'm sure you would love to find your lunch, Jetfag, but I'm not too bothered about finding your lunch right now. Uh, A, because you're a digital character and it doesn't matter um, about you having food anyway, because, you know, a digital, digital character doesn't really need to eat and all that. It's, I mean, like, if they will do, you're a bit nasty, though. And second of all, I'm more bothered about the speed of than I am about your lunch, no offense, feds, though. But if I was in Jeff X position, I would definitely care about my lunch, all right, because I do really like me some lunch, to say the least. Night against night, that works. Yes, we are, because we're awesome. Yes, we have knocked off apart, so that's sickles. Or I'd even go as far to say Hood's cause indeed. A character in this game, a dark a dark villain in fact, uh, which I do not own, which is a shame. Yeah, it's not that easy for uh, this Night Doomlander right here, Chaos. And yes, we have indeed knocked off some of the gear because I'm awesome like that. As I said before, you can growl as much as you want, but you're not going to get anywhere in life with it. Okay, definitely got to watch out for those, uh, Wrecking Balls. Oh, darn. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need to watch out for them Wrecking Balls, to say the least. Oh, nice. The Wrecking Balls definitely giving us the advantage, right? Okay, we're going to go ahead and swap out, um, Sea Slugger for... Castle Crusher right here before I risk losing Sea Slugger because uh, after this far in, not losing a life um, and losing life right now would be devastating because you know I really want that no life source objective so if I can uh, if I can finish this, get the speed run, have all areas found and complete my co uh, collection because I uh, got the radio earlier and on top of that also getting a life lost that would be glorious because it mean I get straight to my three stars so that's why I'd definitely be glad to get a life lost most certainly and that's why I wouldn't want to take risks which means swapping out most certainly Either way, the next episode is of course going to be for Guacamole Monster, and for the Guacamole Monster, for Skydown, for Portal, is of course going to be um, Candy Coated Chop Scotch, which you guys are probably going to find confusing, because of course I'm about to end off this episode with um, Cattle Crusher, or Castle Crusher, I should even say, why well, do I keep saying Cattle, if they geography too much, but either way, um... Yeah, and that's because, if you remember, on my original run, I finished the Doomlander boss fight off with Chop Scotch. So basically, it means that when I went to record the Guacamole Monster, because I recorded the Guacamole Monster between my original run and the speed run right here, so basically meant that Candy Coated Chop Scotch was on the portal that entire time. So that means, uh, so that's why um, in the next episode, we're going to jump back to uh, Candy Coated Chop Scotch. So just in case that would confuse you guys, I went ahead and explained it here. And I actually explained it in the next episode as well, because I actually know what happens in the next episode. Spoiler alert, we're successful. But I've with that being said and done, as you could see, uh, as you're about to see, hopefully we will get our three stars. Time for the grand unveiling. So at the very least, we did indeed get a middle star for that, um... Troll radio, and we also got our final star as well. Oh man, we had plenty of time to spare on that speed run, so I am indeed in in incredibly happy about that. And as I said, um, no risk, high reward, because of course it meant that I got my no last last objective. So we got three stars on that, that is indeed glorious to see. And so, with that being said, done, thanks so much for watching this episode, guys. It is indeed coming to an end. So, um, it's been a glorious one indeed, as I previously mentioned. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. But until then, peace. And I'll see you once we defeat that Gorkoro Monster, because as I've previously mentioned, I win. Spoiler alert.